Adam, I filmed this more minutes earlier so I could talk to you from the future to let you know you have a new mission to rank all five Mission Impossible films from worst to best. Do you accept? Thanks, Adam. Of course I do. Let's get started. Mission Impossible movie has its own feel to it, yet they all retain that same level of polish you come to expect from the franchise. Mission Impossible 2 is a giant departure from the first. Instead of continuing the spy games and complicated espionage, Ethan Hunt is thrown into a much more action-oriented picture. This time the picture is directed by John, just like the White Wing Dove, Wu. I like it from an action standpoint, but it's really silly and it's by far the least attractive of the movies. Although Tom's hair is a true tour de force, it could shelter a small Indonesian village with its warmth. It's the least Mission Impossibly of the lot, focusing more on Tom Cruise as a one-man army and less on the team aspect. Everything has a 90s vibe to it, from the shades to the bro music like Metallica and Limp Bizkit. I'm not sure if that's a bad thing, but it's definitely 90s. It's been many moons, which Tom owns property on, since I've seen the original Mission Impossible and I'd like to go back and rewatch, see if it still holds up. I remember being pleasantly surprised in the theaters. A lot of twists and turns and some really cool mask trickery that would become one of the many staples of the franchise. It's a more methodical, slower paced film featuring the cat and mouse type of situations and less on the gunplay. There are always some memorable heist scenes and the original has an instant classic where Cruz hangs upside down in a white room with a single computer. And that final sequence where a helicopter goes toe to toe with the train in a tunnel reminds me of why I go to the theaters. I'll never look at gum the same way again. RED LIGHT! GREEN LIGHT! ACTING! Brad Bird takes a break from directing amazing animations such as The Incredible to try his hand at live action. Mission accomplished. MI4 takes the perfectly balanced ideas from 3 and runs with them. A great team has been established with Ving Rhames following Cruise through all five films. Simon Pegg and Jeremy Renner are great additions, but there's a weak villain at play here. Fortunately for us, the spectacle is out in full force. Sandstorm shootouts, a prison escape, and an epic building side stunt keep things entertaining. The camera's all over the place, moving fluently in and out of buildings, much like a uh, bird, you could say, a Brad Bird. Yeah, we're, we're doing this. Making it more impressive is Tom Cruise's dedication to the stunt work, doing most of them on his own to get the best picture possible, the best sequence money can buy. From the moment the film fires up, I'm grinning from ear to ear. That's right, I have a Joker-sized grin. It's quite disturbing. There's a level of sheer excitement with this franchise, a series that at first struggled to find its tone, now executes a new chapter with ease. All the key players are brought back and some new recruits have been thrown into the mix, like Alec Baldwin as the head of the CIA, and I'm pretty sure I'm in love with Rebecca Ferguson, who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cruz in most scenes, keeping up with him, sometimes even surpassing him. Well, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but she definitely keeps up. She's got the run down pat. What the hell does down pat mean anyways? Ferguson, look it up, and then show yourself out because you're fired. Your incompetence never ceases to amaze me and disappoint me. The stunts are once more amped up with the Prince of Scientology hanging from a cargo plane and holding his breath underwater for long periods of time. He's most likely gonna have to fight about three sharks, gut one of them, climb inside to take refuge for a night underwater. I see no other way he's gonna top himself in MI6. <laughs> Who does one turn to when you need to revitalize a stagnant franchise? In JJ We Trust. This isn't necessarily better in terms of action and spectacle, although there is plenty of it here. What really sets it apart from the others is the villain, played by the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. The scenes between Hoffman and Cruz are a blast to watch, both competing to try and overact one another while the audience wins by merely witnessing. My favorite scene in the entire MI franchise is when Tom Cruise gets thrown into a car from a shockwave of a nearby explosion. He then proceeds to get up take an assault rifle, and shoot down the drone that was going after him. The sequence is total nonsense and 100% Hollywood awesome. The film set the stage for future MI flicks in terms of scope, direction, and pacing. Perfectly blending heists, mystery, and action. From here on out, it's all gold.
I don't, I was like cracking an egg and mixing it. A couple years ago, I feuded the Mission Impossible franchise versus the Die Hard franchise, and I, I went with Die Hard. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. I can be a bigger person. I mean, very rarely, but once in a while. And I was dead wrong when it came to that. While Mission Impossible continues to remain as polished as ever, upping itself at all turns, Die Hard forgets what made it great, and it continues on that downward slope to mediocrity. Well, the last one was full-on terrible, but well, that's for another time. Now that I've told you my list, I want you to reach down inside. Come up with your own Mission Impossible list. See if it matches up well with mine. If not, well... This is more than just reviews. This is movie feuds. It's a poker term, down pat. Good. I'm surprised you even had to look that up, considering your thousands of dollars gambling debts. Get out!